It is Wednesday, October 5th, 2016, and welcome to this episode of Code Evolution. Today I wanted to do a really quick video that kind of walks through uh, a minor introduction to uh, TypeScript 2 and how to get it, and then also um, a little bit of discussion about non-nullable types, which for me is a huge deal. It's a really big deal. Um, it's something that TypeScript and any other ECMAScript has never even really seen before. And in some cases, even strongly typed languages have never seen it because no one has ever taken a uh, loosely typed language and had applied types to it like TypeScript uh, has and how flexible it is. So it's very interesting to see, and you know, I want to give a big kudos out to uh, Anders Salzberg and his team and everybody working on this because it's going to really, 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 really make a big difference in people's uh, coding experience. So to get started, I'm just going to jump in and really go super quick through this, and hopefully um, you can see that this is from scratch, getting going with a TypeScript 2 project. So the first thing you want to do is install TypeScript into your project at a specific version because at the moment, if you do an NPM install, well, at least at the current moment, this may change over time or will change in the future, but if you install uh, TypeScript from using NPM, you're going to get a 1.8.10 version at least at this current moment. So this is how you get TypeScript 2.03 installed. At least that is the current version at the moment. You could do it next. Uh, and that would also get you TypeScript, but um, this is kind of the way I've been doing it. So next up, now that we have TypeScript installed, uh, we can then basically go to our little project here. Uh, I'm in WebStorm, and let's say uh, I need to get this to auto-compile for me. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add a new uh, TS config. And in that TS config, we're gonna leave this alone for now. Uh, we're also going to go and say, um, we're going to create a new, uh, let's just do a simple main file for testing. Okay, and here we are in our main file. Now when setting the settings inside of WebStorm, you need to enable the TypeScript compiler. You're definitely going to want to use a TS config. And then, you know, instead of the built-in TypeScript version, you need to change to a custom directory that is under your node modules. So you're going to go node, TypeScript, and then lib is the folder. Click OK, and then everything should be good to go, and then WebStorm will automatically compile it for you. So here we go, and we have our main, main TS. So there's a lot of cool features in TypeScript 2. Now you saw it wasn't really hard to set up TypeScript 2 to run, um, and you, know, you could obviously install it globally and everything would be fine. But what I want to show off is this notion of non-nullable types. So how do we enable non-nullable types? Or as some other people might actually talk about it, it's strict null checks, right? So strict null checks, set that to true. And now the compiler will not allow you to write code that isn't explicit about whether it's null or not. Now what does that mean? Well, let's start out by declaring a type called primitive. Now going into ES6 and more modern versions of uh, ECMAScript, there is a thing called a symbol, but we're not going to get into that now. You could include symbol as part of your primitive, but for just this purpose, just to kind of talk about types and what they can and what they can't be, uh, we're going to start with these simple types, in this case a primitive. So let's say you write a function, uh, maybe a sorting function or something like that, right? So sort, um, you know, typically speaking, whatever your type of your array is, should be a primitive. Now, why am I doing this in generics at the moment? Well, I'm doing this, so let's say, um, let's say source, or actually we'll, we'll just say target. Okay, and so why would I use um, generics to define, declare this function? Well, it's because by using generics, I ensure that the type going in, if it's a string, 
or it's if it's an array of strings or an array of booleans or an array of numbers or whatever, it's also reflected back out as an array of strings, numbers, and booleans instead of just assuming that it's one of any of those within uh, an array. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't go and specifically have an array of primitives, but let's say the common case is an array of strings, an array of numbers, and that's it. So you've got your sort function, and you want to be sure that I mean, in this case, the target can't be null, right? And so in the case of, let's say, you know, whatever our pseudocode is, we're just gonna, for now, you know, regardless of what's going on in here, you know, fake. When we go to consume this function, let's say we were to do sort null, you'll see here that null is not an allowed option here. Now, normally in JavaScript and in TypeScript before strict null checks, this was totally allowed because anything could be null. But now we are saying no, this is null and undefined are not, they're not implicitly an option, right? Because we've said you have to be explicit. Now, let's say, for example, I wanted to allow for null. Okay, well, then what you can do is you can put an union type, and that union type can be of null and then it's okay, right? Because null has now been upgraded to a fully fledged type that can be determined in this way. All right, well, well then if I, maybe I think I'm smart and I'm slick and I'm gonna put undefined. Ha, take that. Also not allowed when strict null checks uh, are enabled. So, you know, and this applies to everything, which is really great because in many cases, right, we're probably gonna sit here and go, if, uh, not target, then throw, you know, cannot be null. And that's the right thing to do because at runtime, somebody could still pass a null in there and there's nothing you could do about it. So having some sort of assertion, this doesn't erase the need for it, but man, does it make it cool when you're programming to not have to think about it and that you, your compile time basically instructs you, hey dude, you screwed up. Um, there are a lot of other really interesting things that have come out of uh, the strict null checks. For example, uh, default parameters. So now I've created this function that takes A and B, but B is optional. Well, optional is treated similarly to undefined. The compiler understands that not only is that an optional parameter? So if I say fn, uh, and then I go, uh, let's say we're gonna say eight, and then we're gonna produce a string called blah, right? That's gonna work just fine. There we go. But at the same time, if I type undefined, or if I leave it alone, it's allowed, right? If I type undefined, it's equivalent to this. So it's totally okay with that, but it won't allow for null. See? So what's going on here? Well, that's because this represents or maps directly to undefined. So I'm allowed to put undefined and it'll work, or I'm allowed to leave it blank. But let's say, for example, you're like, but I want the option to put null in my, uh, my parameter here. Well, interestingly enough, if you want to have the option for it to be null, then you need to make it a null type that equals null or one that equals undefined and then maybe equals null still. Or let's say equi the equivalent of this, let's say for example, if you wanted to know, the equivalent of this is still the same thing as going th this. So it's totally okay to have an optional parameter that appends null as one of the options, and then it will mirror the same behavior that you used to expect in the case of default parameters could be anything or any type, whether it's null or undefined. But in some cases, we may say, actually, I want the default to be null, then I would need to go null. And if I wanted not only the default to be null and I wanted to allow for undefined, I'd have to do this. So in some ways things haven't changed and in other ways they have. So adding these potential types uh, 
you know, it seems like more work, but in the long run, and I've done a lot of cleanup and getting this up to date with the code I'm working on, it's very, very useful and effectively solves a lot of potential problems. Like it, in some respects, eliminates the idea of a null, refer, uh, null reference exception because you just you can just prevent them from happening upstream and downstream. So speaking of downstream, let's see what we do here or what happens when we set up our function like this, right? And let's say I wanted to do, and I create a new variable called first character. Makes sense, right? Everything should be fine. But look what happened. What happened was the TypeScript compiler, you see a TS, 2532 has identified that this individual variable could be undefined. And because it can be undefined, it assumes that there's a potential error and warns you about it. This is huge. Like, if you've never seen this kind of stuff before in inspection, in C sharp, in JavaScript, the first thing like this that I've seen personally is code contracts in C sharp. And it's extremely powerful because it's instructing you before you make a mistake, that you made a potential mistake. And it's part of the compiler. It's built in, and it's very, very elegant and easy and smart. Again, huge kudos to Anders and his team. So what do you do to solve this problem? Well, because it's asserting that, hey, you could have an undefined value, right? You know, in some respects, you could say, uh, like I said, the same thing could happen here if you put undefined. And obviously, you needed to have undefined as a type. You know, it's pretty much the equivalent thing. Um, you could do the same thing with null. And you're still going to get the same error. So how do you get rid of the error? Well, interestingly enough, if it's not a optional property, and because you have strict null checks enabled, it's not an error. There's no problem. You'll see that the error is now that I don't have uh, a string in here. So what do we do? What, what can we do if we want to keep this as an optional parameter and we don't want this error without turning off strict null checks? Because that's the feature that we want to embrace and start using even more. Well, the first thing you got to do is basically say, OK, well, B and this could you know, solve the problem. But, and that would automatically make the inference that this first character can be the same type because it could be undefined or it could be some string value, right? And that will propagate through here as well. But probably more appropriately, we'd say B and B or none or something to that effect. That way, the first character variable also knows that for sure, it's always going to be a string value. And in this case, we can even kind of see, so we could say FC2 equals first character. And then for whatever, we can also check zero and you're going to find out that it knows by proper type chain inference and all this crazy stuff that TypeScript thankfully does, it knows that by the code itself, there's no way that this could be null and it doesn't warn you about it. So you can relax. The likelihood of making a mistake is a lot less and you can focus more on the important parts of your code as long as you follow the simple rules that strict null checks puts in place for you. So thanks again for watching. I hope this video helped you to learn more about non nullable types and TypeScript 2. If you, this helped you in any way, please give the video a like and hit subscribe if you want to see more content like this.